Hallelujah. Online. We're so glad to have you tonight and look forward to a great lesson together. Uh, this is a, um, a I, I want to say, meaty and lesson. So we're going to we're going to jump in here, both feet running. Hallelujah. See if, we, see if we can't get it done. Praise God in the amount of time that we have. We're going to share it. Say welcome, everybody. Glad you could be here. Go ahead and share it with all your friends. And um, as soon as I do that, then we're going to be done and ready to go. I mean, done with that part. And ready to roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lesson five. The Bible in the light of our redemption, uh, using again, once again, E.W. Kenyon's basic Bible course. We encourage you to get this, Amazon.com or um, Walmart.com. Man's need for righteousness. Now, so far leading up to this, we talked about creation. The reason for creation, the reason uh, for the creation of man, man's treason and result, the reign of spiritual death. And now we're moving here into lesson five, man's need for righteousness. He, after spiritual death overtook him, um, in order to be reconciled to God, he once again must be made righteous. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know, people, men, people question God all the time on his right and authority to, to send people to hell. Um, saying, you know, you know, God, God doesn't have the right to do that. I mean, he's not a loving God. How could a loving God send man to hell? And, uh, it really has nothing to do with whether he's a loving God or not. That's, that's not, um, um, question of his love. The love of God made provision so man wouldn't have to. Uh, but see, you got unregenerated man who wants to go to not go to hell and still live in sin. Um, God had the right to create man, just like a, a man and a woman have a right to create a child. Adam was the master of himself. Uh, he, uh, he did not, Adam did not have to yield to Satan in the garden of Eden. He made a choice to do it. Unfortunately, as we can say, um, and when he did, um, the joy and peace he knew in creation was exchanged for sin, sickness, and death. Um, the three, the threefold fall of man, spiritual sick, uh, sin, sickness, and spiritual death. And um, entering into our present state of the world, these things rule and reign over unregenerated man. God has vindicated himself before humanity because he didn't leave him in that place. He could, he could have. He could have turned around and wiped it out. He could have wiped it out and said, I'm done with it. And, um, just sent the whole crowd packing with Satan to, to hell, but he didn't. And, uh, but he provided a means whereby man could be redeemed out of that. So there's a threefold problem with this, with man, um, man's need for redemption and reconciliation with God, uh, could only happen by receiving eternal life into him, spirit, the nature of God. Remember, when Adam committed high treason, he was born again from death unto life. I mean, I'm sorry, from life unto death. We like to say that Adam is the first man to be born again. He was born again from life unto death. His spirit experienced a spiritual change. He did not remain the same. Um, God cannot just come up to a man and impart to him his nature and give him the privilege of, privilege of sonship on legal grounds because man is a spirit, remember, spiritually aligned as a subordinate spirit. We talked about that last week with Satan. So the father, so God has to redeem man outside of man's works. There's no works that man could do that would achieve the payment for high treason. So God, the, the 
problem that man has with God, that God has with man and fixing man is he needs um, righteousness. Man needs to be made righteous. How? We know uh, from the book of Romans that even if a man did everything that God said in the law, he couldn't do it. If he missed it at one, he says it in, in, in that it was weak through, through the lightness of sinful flesh, through flesh. Man it was incapable of keeping the law. Incapable. Um, Romans 3.26 in the ASV says, that he might be righteous and the righteousness of him that hath faith in Jesus. God had, God had to fix this thing because man needed righteousness, but he couldn't do it on his own. He couldn't buy it. He couldn't purchase it. He couldn't earn it. He couldn't go out and do enough good things to achieve that status. Um, so there had to be a legal side of redemption. Then that came in Christ. Man must be given righteousness. God must have a legal right to declare a spiritual dead, dead man, a child of Satan, is righteous. Now, how do you do that? How do you take a man under the captivity, bondage, and authority of God's spiritual enemy, Satan, how do you go to the man who now Satan is now the, the father of humanity? Remember, Jesus said in John 8, 44, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will fulfill. I'd say it this way. The devil's your daddy. If you're not born again, the devil's your daddy. We're all God's children. No, that's inaccurate. That's not a biblical statement. Now, do you mean that creation came as, that humanity came as a um, result of the creation of God? Yes. But now, because of Adam's high treason, people are not children of God. Satan is their daddy, so, which is not a very pleasant thing to think about. They're united with him. So, there's a threefold problem in man be, being made righteous first god must be righteous in his dealings with man in other words he can't excuse the sin he just can't go look and say okay I, I just overlooked that sin it doesn't matter what a lot of grace people kind of teach they're teaching a grace out of balance with the whole word of counsel of the word of god okay thank god for grace but God doesn't just forget the sin. There's a basis by which grace is applied. Hallelujah. Uh, the transgression cannot be overlooked and the penalty must be paid. So God has to be righteous. He has to be right. He has to be uh, just in his dealing with man. The, the penalty has to be paid. Second, because Adam committed high treason and turned the authority over to Satan, God must act towards Satan on the grounds of absolute justice. It must be spiritually legal. He can't go, I'm sovereign, I'm God, I can do what I want to do. Not and not violate his word. Hello. God must redeem man from Satan's authority on legal grounds. There must be legal authority to do it. You can't do it end around. It's not a covert operation. It has to be straight up, strictly legal. And thirdly, God not only has to be just to man and to Satan, God's actions must also be according to his own righteousness. He can't violate himself. Righteousness is the very foundation of his throne. And the standard cannot be lowered. 
God doesn't lower the standard. God has man has been brought up to that standard. So there has to be legal grounds in which God can uh, justly judge the human race, compel humanity to pay the price for sin if they reject the substitute. So let's look at the penalty of man's sin for a second. When justice was made her demand that man must pay the penalty of his crime, man was unable to, uh, like, like Kenya says, even pay the interest. There was no mitigation. The crime was high pre treason as unpardonable. There, there wasn't a plea bargain. Okay, let Satan rule over them for 3,000 years, then we'll take back over and put it back the way it was. And, and the sin not actually be dealt with. The penalty of man's sin was hell. Knowing the nature of the sin, which is high treason, we, you can understand the reason for hell. Man is eternal. Listen to this now. Man is eternal. When man was created, that was it. He would exist forever. There would be no ceasing of the existence of man. Y'all out there, you've gone home. Angels are eternal. When the angels rebelled against God, they were reserved and changed to the judgment. When men rebelled against God, they took on the very same order of penalty that Satan had been given. He's, the second death, eternal Eternal lake of fire is his destination. There's nothing can really stop it. Man is a spirit, and as an eternal spirit, he had to have an eternal home to be incarcerated. He could not be allowed to roam the heavens and the earth as an eternal criminal, causing disruption and confusion all the time. Now, although hell was not prepared for man, you look in Matthew 25, 41, uh, it was prepared for the devil and his angels, the fallen angels. God intended, intended for man to eternally rule on the earth, never to be in hell. But when he bound himself with Satan, he bound himself with Satan's destiny. Man's estate, man's future, man's destination was now hell. So being an eternal colonel, <clears throat> there was going to be an eternal restraint for him. Um, a, basically a federal, a, a, a penitentiary for, the, for his spirit could not roam the earth. We've got jails, we've got state prisons, we've got federal prisons. Um, when they violate laws, you go to them. You violate heaven's laws, you go to um, the same prisons that, that Satan and his angels were doomed to at their insurrection against God. Humanity universally believes in some type of hell or place of confinement for punishment after death, or they just don't believe in any, anything after death. That's how they, you know, that, that's how they answer that question. Well, there's nothing, when you die, you die. That's it. Man, what a fatalistic view of, of existence. I mean, really. Well, you live, and when you die, you die, that's it. There's nothing else. Go ahead and tell yourself that if you want to. But, you know, like people say, if you're right and I'm wrong, we won't ever know about it. But if I'm right and you're wrong, you'll spend eternity paying for it. So God has to be just towards Satan. God in restoring to, uh, righteousness to man must not take advantage of Satan. Adam gave Satan legal authority to rule over the creation of God for the time, uh, the lease of Adam that God had given to him. 
and he made man his subject and slave. God in his omnipotence, all powerful, is stronger than Satan. God's is more powerful than Satan. But he can only strip Satan of his authority in a way that is dealt with justly. Power wise, God could have come in and just snatched it away right from the devil and said, You can't have it. I'm more powerful than you. But it wouldn't have been legally spiritual. So therefore, he would have violated his own law, his own integrity, his, his self. The plan had to be enacted with unquestionable legal authority. God had to be just toward man. In dealing with man on the grounds of justice, God must recognize the transgression and see that the penalty is paid. There must be the penalty for the sin. I love that movie, National Treasure. And, um, you know, they're sitting there near the end of the movie, and uh, he said, I want so-and-so to get, you know, credit for discovery of the treasure and, you know, and, you know, my father's uh, record is sponged, da 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 da, -da. And, uh, and then he, he, he said, the guy, the FBI agent looks at uh, Nicolas Cage and says, what do you want? He said, I, I really, really would like not to go to jail. <laughs> and he said, somebody's got to go to jail. <laughs> somebody's got to go to jail. There was a crime committed here. And, um, and of course, you know, they got the other bad guy. <clears throat> he said, I got to, I can help you with that. <laughs> okay. So the penalty has to be man's redemption must be legitimate. Man's redemption must be legitimate. Thus allowing a redeemed man to remain, maintain his self-respect, knowing that he was justified on legal grounds. When man sinned, he became a, a partaker of Satan's nature. And as a result of his transgression, he must be incarcerated in hell. Someone must go there, pay the penalty, so that man can give, be given eternal life and a standing before God as though he had never sinned. And here's the thing. There wasn't a man. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When we look at the Old Testament sacrificial things, they had to be spotless and blemishless lambs in order to be the sin offering. Hello? There couldn't be any thing less than perfection. The, the sin of Adam required that a man pay the price. And because all men had been sold under that authority, all men had to pay the price for Adam's sin because they likewise followed in their lives in that sin. Only a human outside of Satan's domain could take the place of sin, that was sinless Take the place of sinful man. Problem is, there wasn't one. No way to get one. Not through the normal channels. The redemption will free man, the redemption would free man from going to hell, but if he refused to persist in his union with Satan, then he must share the fate of such a one. What must redemption include? The penalty of Adam's transgression must be adequately paid so that man can be delivered from satanic dominion. There must also be placed into the hands of man a weapon in defense of off, a weapon of defense and offense. Man must be given authority by which he can meet Satan and conquer him in honorable combat. There must be a resurrection of the physical body of man and immortality must be granted because men at the beginning had a perfect human body. Man had to be given an immortal body. Now, 
he became mortal when he sinned, death doomed. He must now be, get, must now be given an immortal, non-death doomed body over which death can have no dominion or authority. Again, there must be a restoration to the earth, to the Edenic, 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 glory and beauty. Sometimes can you make some words and I'm just like, I wonder if there were really words. <laughs> okay. Edenic, glory and beauty. It must be on the such basis that there can never be, and be a recurrence of satanic dominion. Ah, it has to be a way that it's set up that Satan can't get the authority back over all mankind again, no matter what. Man's redemption must include a new creation, receiving God's life or nature, a perfect righteousness, and a perfect reconciliation of fellowship so that man will feel at home with God once more. God must be able to give man a son's heart, place in his heart, as well in all creation, so that righteousness, sonship privileges, and the fullest fellowship will be a man's eternal rights. No redemption that does not give these three great blessings will reach man's need. Think about this. There must, uh, again, there must be a restoration of the earth to the eating at glory and beauty. It must be on such a basis that there can never again be a recurrence of Satan dominion. How did that happen? Because God made the reconciliation between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. See, God did not make his covenant of reconciliation with him and Ed Taylor. It was with the man, Christ Jesus. I partake of it through the new birth and become part of the body of Christ. But I don't have legal sway over anything else except me. If I were to reject it, I would be lost, but I would not sell the redemption back into Satan's hands because it's held at the head of the church, Jesus himself. Glory to God. Therefore, God himself must provide a redeemer. God must provide a redeemer that in such legal authority and right can redeem mankind. The redemption for man that will restore righteousness to him must emanate from God. No man himself could meet the demands of justice on behalf of the human race. For every man born of natural generation is a broken, helpless slaves, slave in the hands of an enemy who rules him and who has the authority to cast him into hell. No man can stand before God for himself, for the whole human race is under indictment. Therefore, there is not a man who can represent the human race before God. I mean, we, look at this. When God, when man, when Adam committed high treason, instantly, God knew there was no redemption that could come for man. He couldn't make a covenant with one of the guys and have him go pay the price for everybody. A tale of two cities wouldn't work. A good man, although it's allegorical of, I am sure Miss Hoots would say, the Christ figure. <laughs> I'll guarantee you that he's the Christ figure in that story. And, and I get, well, and really, he probably is. If you've never read the book or seen the movie, it's two men learning to love with the same woman. One's a scoundrel and does something worthy of the death penalty, but the other guy loves her so much that on the way to the gallows, he finds a way to exchange place with the guy that she really loves because he loves her so much, and he goes and, pay, and is hung or, be, or, or head, beheaded. I can't remember if it was in France or England, the story. And... Um, I think he went to the guillotine. And um, well, you just have to re read it anyway. And um, 
He dies instead. Someone said, you just ruined the story for me. Well, you should have read it before now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the other guy and her lived happily ever after. Well, the problem is there was not a man ever lived that could do that for the humanity for humanity before the courts of God and Satan. Now what? Man, God's all knowing. He would know that he was a fallen man. Okay? Uh, but he is the Christ figure in that story. Praise God. The Redeemer must be born. Not, he, must be, uh, he must be born not of natural generation. He must be conceived in such a manner that he's not subject of Satan. He must not possess within his spirit spiritual death. He must stand before God as the first Adam stood in righteousness, possessing the same dominion and authority. And we see that time and time and time again in the ministry of Jesus, the forces of nature and so forth. Satan himself did not have dominion over Jesus. He must walk on the earth as a man perfectly pleasing the Father. Was in every point tempted like we are yet without sin. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He overcame all three. He must meet Satan in temptation as the first man and woman had met him. But he must not yield to Satan's will. This man, this, this, one, this one man that God must provide somehow, must act as man's substitute. Man's sin, spiritual death itself, must be laid upon this man. Then the judgment of Satan must fall upon him. He must meet the demands of justice. In order to do this, he must go to hell he must remain there under judgment until every legal requirement of justice has been fully satisfied against the human race. He must stay there and suffer until God can legally acquit every human being who takes him as Savior and every human being who, entrust, who trusted in the blood covenant from the beginning. And which of the angels did he say at any time? Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, when he bringeth, uh, and when he, again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. Hallelujah. When the claims were met, the father said, it's enough. Hallelujah. He must be greater than Satan. Not only must this Redeemer be free from Satan's dominion in his earth walk, he must be one who, um, after the penalty had been paid, will be able to conquer Satan, taking from him <coughs> the lordship and legal dominion over man. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He must conquer death bringing life and immortality to the broken, bondaged human. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. Uh, I'm he who was dead and now alive and had the keys of hell, uh, hell and the grave. Hallelujah. No angel can act. Angels were created beings that were subordinate to Satan. They were subordinate to God from the beginning. An angel could not meet the demands of justice. And no other man could meet the requirements of justice for a redeemer because of his union and subjection to Satan. God and man must be united. In order for this to happen, it must be a God-man. The incarnation was the only answer. God must become flesh. In the beginning was God Amen. Amen. In the beginning was God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. John, the first chapter. It 
In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14, and the Word was made flesh, became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Man's only answer is for God to become man and offer himself. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide himself a ram. Only the union of God and man can provide the Redeemer who will walk in righteousness as a man with the ability to pay man's penalty and conquer Satan. And then deity must suffer for man. God had created the man even though he knew he would fall. The responsibility of such a creation rested on the Father God. He must provide a redemption. The only way for man to be given him righteousness is the incarnation of God's own son. The second person of the Godhead must come. God's must, beloved son must come out of the Father's bosom. He must lay aside his glory and his majesty. He must come to the earth. He must walk as a son, pleasing the Father, conquering Satan in his earth walk as a man. And then God must take on man's sin nature. <clears throat> God must take on the hideous, monstrous thing, spiritual death, and lay upon the spirit of his holy, eternal son. And the son must go under judgment, and the wrath and indignation of eternal justice must be meted out toward him. And then he must be made righteous, and the righteousness will become man's. It was through one man's judgment had come. I mean, through one man that judgment had come. One man without sin shall be able on legal grounds to pay that penalty so that the human race shall be declared free from guilt and unrighteousness if he confesses the lordship of the incarnate one. So, in conclusion, Man's need of eternal life demands righteousness. And man's need of righteousness demands the incarnation. Now, we have a bunch of scriptures here that he gave. You need to study those. Uh, scriptures revealing the unrighteousness of man. Uh, re scriptures revealing judgment rested upon man. Scriptures showing hell is the place of confinement. Scriptures showing the inability of man to redeem himself. And scriptures revealing that Christ must meet the requirements of justice as man's redeemer. And so they study these, read these, look these up, study them. Um, because they're important to understanding this. You know, these, this, this really is the basis of the lesson or the sermon we always like, we love to preach. Uh, what happened from the cross to the throne? Hallelujah. And teaching on the authority of man. Uh, this this is um, these these things right here are the very foundation of that. So let's look uh, at our um, question and answers here. Praise the Lord. How has God vindicated Himself on the charge of injustice? And here's the answer: because He did not leave man in His condition, but provided a redemption, which man could enjoy through faith in Jesus Christ that would answer every or man's every need. God did not leave man. He didn't, he didn't go, oh, well, you messed up. I'm out of here. Tough. I'm going to wipe it out. Put everybody in hell. That's it. He provided their redemption that met every need that man had. But why was the penalty of man's transgression hell? Because man's sin was high treason and therefore unpardonable. Because of this fact, man became a spiritual criminal 
and there must be therefore incarcerated and hell was fitted for his confinement because man was a, was a was a, an eternal being in that once he he was created he was he would never cease to exist so there had to be a spiritual prison for spiritual criminals What was, what was involved within the problem of God's justice towards man? Well, God had to recognize the transgression and see that the penalty was paid. Man's redemption must be legitimate, thus allowing the redeemed man to maintain his self-respect, knowing he was justified on legal grounds. What did God's justice towards Satan demand? Well, Satan had the legal right to rule creation because Adam gave it to him. Therefore, God couldn't take advantage of it. He just couldn't come in there and take it away from him. He had to strip him of his authority in a just manner. But why was no man able to redeem humanity? Because man could not redeem himself for he was under authority to Satan, who had the authority to cast man into hell. Man could no longer stand before God on his own behalf because of all of mankind was under indictment. Name the requirements that a redeemer must meet. He must not be a man born of natural generation. He must be conceived in a manner that he is subject to um, in a manner that he is not a subject of Satan. He must not possess within his spiritual nature spiritual death. He must be able to stand before God as the first Adam did in righteousness, possessing the same dominion and authority. And he must walk on the earth as a man, perfectly pleasing the Father. He must meet Satan in temptation, but not yield to him. In the second part of this, um, number six, what is his work on man's behalf to be? He must be man's substitute. Man's sin, that is spiritual death itself, must be laid upon him. Judgment must fall on him. <clears throat> he must go to hell and remain there until every legal requirement of justice has been satisfied. And what must man's redemption include? Man's penalty must be paid. Authority must be restored to him. He must have a resurrected physical body with immortality. The earth must be restored. He must be a new creation. And he must have a place of fellowship. That's a lot of must, isn't it? Hallelujah. Describe the fellowship between the new man in Christ and God. In the simplest terms, man once again feels at home with God. Number nine, give a scripture showing man's righteousness. Well, Romans 1, 18, 3, 9, and 10, 5, 16 through 18 and 19. That's more than one. The judgment that rested on man, Romans 5, 16 through 18, John 16, 8 and 11, and John 3, 36. And man's inability to make himself righteous. Ephesians 2, 2, and 3, and 12, Isaiah 59, 15, and 16, Romans 3, 20, 1 John 2, 10, John 8, 34, Colossians 1, 13, Hebrews 2, 14, and 15. <clears throat> and then this final question, obviously this is a yes or no answer. Did you study each scripture? <laughs> yeah or no? Well, that's not exactly a yes or no that's as yes or no as you can get. Did you study each scripture or not? Hallelujah. Uh, we kind of had to, we kind of blitzed through that one. There's a lot there. Oh my goodness, there's a lot there. And um, we trust that, you know, you've, you've been studying yourself. And um, next week we're talking about man's need of a mediator. Hallelujah. And we'll, we'll move into that. And um, so we look forward to next week. Hallelujah. Don't forget Sunday. We continue teaching on the fruit of the spirit. And then next Tuesday night, we'll be in prayer. And next Wednesday night, man's need of a mediator, uh, lesson six. And uh, we're just, God's good. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I uh, just want to bless you. Tell you until we meet again, remember these words in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online. Praise the Lord.